That's a great point. Uh, Mark Evans, the second Arkansas Pine Bluff offensive lineman, joins us now on 365 Sports. And, Mark, I spoke with uh, someone that knows you on staff and some great stories about you when you arrived at Arkansas Pine Bluff. But first of all, how are you enjoying right now with all of what has to be a whirlwind leading up to the Combine? I'm really enjoying it right now. It's all new for me because, you know, I never really experienced nothing like this before. So, just, just being able to experience this because, you know, I didn't really get highly recruited out of college. So, it's kind of like, you know, I'm getting that period of time that I missed back then. So, I'm kind of getting it right now. So, I'm kind of enjoying it. What is it like when people who, you know, kind of – you're almost a name on the list to a lot of guys, right? All right, let's see. Mark Evans, Arkansas Pine Bluff. All right. All right, kid, go. And then you, they go, oh. Why do we know about Mark Evans from Arkansas Pine Bluff? What's that feeling like when you show him what you can do? Uh, that feeling like that is great because I feel like a lot of people doubt me because, you know, depending on my size and, you know, also, you know, the school I went to and stuff like that. So a lot of people look at me, you know, they really don't expect a lot. So, you know, when I'm able to go out there and show them like I really do and, you know, able to earn their respect, kind of like, you know, like, yeah, I told you so. Like, you know, all you have to do is just believe. So, you know, it's, it's a great feeling, you know, see me when, you know, kind of change their, their perspectives on me. Do you remember this? I've got a couple of stories about you when you arrived on campus. Cameo Stokes, and you know Cameo. Great. He yeah, loves, I know Cameo real well. He, he <laughs> loves you. He said that when you first arrived on campus, you walked around in a Texas T-shirt, like a shirt that was the, the UT logo on it, and yet you're playing for Arkansas Pine Bluff. You're not the only college player that has ever done that before. But his conversation to you was, Hey, you're one of us now. You need to be proud of where you're playing college football. How much do you remember that story? I remember that story, but I think he kind of got it wrong. It was the Oklahoma, uh, oh, okay. kind of Oklahoma, like throwback, like one of them throwback shirts. It was like one of their throwback logo with the cowboy and all that. So you know, I kind of had that one on. I had it on because the sock. It, it looked, it looked good what I had on that day. So you know, that's kind of why I wear it. <laughs> so, it really wasn't me like ripping Oklahoma, you know, go. Cowboys, I'm like, that was like the way it looked. So, you know, I put it on, you know, he was like, you know, he was ref for school and stuff like that. So, you know, I kind of, I remember that conversation on Thursday. You know. How much has uh, Teron Armstead helped you, uh, a former player at Pine Bluff who's in the NFL, as far as maybe giving you some notice and heads up on what to expect? He's helped me a lot in this process. You know, I'm able to call him. He, I got his number and everything. I've been to his house and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm able to hit him up or whenever I want to, you know. So if I got a question in my mind, some kind of bother me, I'm able to take some call him. You know, he's able to give me insight. So, you know, it's great having the person that went that went through this same process from your school, played the same exact position and stuff like that. So be able to talk to him has been a great outlet, and he's been a great beacon of hope for me as well. You play at an HBCU, and we've seen lately, um, you know, kind of a resurgence in – players going there, people wanting to build those athletic programs back up. How much do you wear that as a badge of honor now to be an NFL draft, draft prospect from an HBCU to even open up even more opportunity for guys not only from Arkansas Pine Bluff but from all of the schools? It's an honor to me, honestly, because I'm able to just go out there and put on for HBCUs and prove that, you know, that we have players that are worthy of, you know, making it to the next level as well. So, you know, as far as, you know, having people coming after me and moving on to the next level and looking up to me, you know, it's kind of like I got my younger brother. He plays at HBCU. He goes to Perry Bain University. So, you know, to have him looking up to me and, you know, to actually be out here showing him that this can be done from, you know, HBCU school, it no matter what school you go to, it's kind of like, you know, it's a big thing for me, honestly. So just to be able to tell people and fool people, you know, it's not, it don't matter where you go to school at, you know, if you can play, they're going to find you. Well, and, and that's something I think Cameo was talking about, that if you're good, they will find you. That's the case even in high school when you were at C.E. King, which, of course, has produced some uh, college football and talent I into the future. When did you know maybe that you were better than just a good college football player? Uh, it kind of – I don't even remember. I know it, it kind of struck me. Like, it probably happened when I was in college. You know, I was kind of doing stuff. I was just trying to be consistent and stuff like that. So, you know – with me being the person I am, I never just really paid it on my It was just me being, you know, wanting to be great and be the best person myself. So, you know, I never really just sit back and compare myself to the people I was always just wanting to be the best me I can be. And, then, and honestly, you know, that kind of turned out to me being, you know, one of the top offensive linemen in the nation. So, And by the way, uh, Mark was up for the Willie Rofe Award, and everyone understands the greatness of Willie Rofe and, and what he also ended up being a pro football Hall of Famer. How much do your nieces mean to you? My nieces and nephews mean the world to me, man. Knowing I got them looking up to me, you know, I'm trying to reason my, me and my brother, I reason my nephew when I play football as well. So, you know, just to be able to 
hear him talking, you know, how he talk about my uncle saying he want to be like my uncle and all that, you know, that's kind of, that's a great thing to have, you know, my nieces and they, they all mean the words to me, you know, so I know I got all the looking up to me. I'm kind of a father figure in their life, so, you know, I just want to do the best I can for a while for them. What if scouts told you, if, if much, what, as far as your strength, your hands, your quick feet, what if, what have they kind of said, or what have you learned? A lot of scouts tell me that I'll be playing center most likely, you know, coming from left back, you know, that's kind of a big, you know, transition. But a lot of scouts tell me they like my athleticism as well. They kind of, they say I'm smart as well. My football instincts are very keen, so, you know. But athleticism, the way I move is a big thing, you know, that's kind of going around what I keep praying while I'm talking to scouts. Yours, I was just reading an article on online about you. Your senior year of high school, you lost your home because of Hurricane Harvey. Uh, yes, sir. that had to be unbelievably difficult and it was a, a, just a terrible event. Um, how did you get through all that and how, how much stronger are you and your family on the back end of, of, of what you've learned coming through that experience? After going through that, man, I definitely feel way more stronger. Getting through that was, I really was relying on my family a lot. You know, it was always just all of us just kind of be a tight end, just relying on each other and everything. So, you know, being in that one bedroom, you know, with no power, you know, we just always in right just talking to each other and all that, just trying, you know, make sure we, we was, you know, uh, crushed for each other and leaning on each other as well. So, you know, I was just kind of feeding on my mama. I was just trying to say something for my younger brother and my sister as well. You know, I didn't kind of want to be the one that was looking down and like that because, you know, I had them looking up, looking at me too as well. So, you know, I just want to be the one that showed everybody, that, you know, it's going to be all right. You know, that having that mindset, you know, it could always be worth it. You know, that good's going to come having faith in the Lord and all that. Really was what got us through that, through that whole process as a whole. By the way, I mentioned earlier, Armstead is uh, Turin Armstrong, uh, who's a, a former Pine Bluff star who's now in the NFL. Where did you get the nickname All-American? All-American? Oh, uh, Cameo called. He Cameo. I remember Cameo talking to me when I first got on campus. You know, I'm walking around. I'm just, you know, happy to get, you know, off from the school. I didn't have them all. So, you know, I'm walking around Pine Bluff. You know, I didn't care if it was, you know. The worst school in the world, you know, I was going to go because, you know, that was school that looked out to me, reached out to me. So, Cameo was the one that was like, um, you know, you're going to be all American one day. And I'm, you know, I'm just like 18. I'm like, man, what you do something? I ain't know what you're talking about. So, I'm just walking around, you know, just really enjoying it. But, you know, it kind of always stuck with me. So, you know, when I got my first all American accolade, you know, he came back to me and he always told me every time I get one, he was like, yeah, I told you. I told you you're going to be all American one day. So, you know, that's kind of what this guy gave me a nickname. You know, Cameo was the only one that called me that, you know. And a couple guys on the team called me that as well. So, you know, that's kind of how the name where the name originated from. What was your Shrine Bowl experience like being around all those top players, all those guys fighting for the same spots that you're going to be fighting for and continue fighting for? But uh, what was that kind of experience to be in an all-star setting with a bunch of people? That, that experience is really fun. You know, I got a chance to, you know, be make, you know, connection and relationship with people from all across the school, all across, the, you know, the nation, you know, top players as well. So, you know, just to be out there, you know, being event like that was like, you know, something that was like totally cool, you know, seeing different types of people walking around, all the scouts that was around the event was just amazing. So, you know, just being able to get in that establishment, being in the atmosphere like that was just crazy. You know, it was just like, I don't know, it was just kind of like a whirlwind, you know, it's kind of everything that was to happen so fast, you know, just being able to get just to the schedule and all that was just really fun, you know. It was a great experience. Eric, Eric Gauco did a good game, good, did a good job, but, you know, setting everything up and having a great week in Vegas. Did you feel like there was any, you know, um, did you feel like you were taking much of a – I mean, because obviously Pine Bluff's not the biggest school in the world, but, you know, there's people from all over the country. Did you feel like there was really that much of a separation talent-wise or skill-wise from what you were I really don't feel like it's that much – oh, my bad. I didn't mean no, to you, go ahead. Go ahead. I really don't feel like it's that much of a, of a, of a, of a uh, difference in the players. You know, I feel like I didn't play better players in the swag. You know, it's players, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all over the world. I just feel like, you know, you got the stigma that small so you see you don't have good players like that. So, you know, I kind of just feel like, you know, that's kind of wrong. So, you know, people are around taking the time and they kind of just, you know, downplaying, you know, your level of competition and all that. But really, it's like, I really didn't have no trouble really adjusting to it. I just, I just had a little trouble adjusting to the interior, like moving to the inside. But you know, I feel like I kind of handled that well. And I ended the week great you know, with a good game. Had you ever snapped the ball before? Not in a game, not in a live setting like that at all. I never <laughs> snapped the ball in the practice or nothing like that. So, you know, I was just kind of getting out there and just trying to show what I can do. But but one of the traits you have aren't your hands. And you would think a guy your size, big, strong, quick feet, obviously playing tackle. But don't you have, like, extremely strong grip and hands? Yes, sir. Most definitely. I think I, I got uh, big, bigger hands for somebody my size. I know scouts tell me all the time. So, you know, be able to just latch on somebody. And when I latch on to them, you know, I'm not letting go. So, you know, it's kind of like my hands get on you, you kind of, you're done. The whole fight over with it.
right. have you ever worked like on a car engine or something like that with you, you know you're, uh, no, like, sir. like you had you could just twist it a, a nut without your uh, without a wrench no i never did nothing like that before but i probably could twist a nut like but it, <laughs> it probably wouldn't be too tight you know it'd probably be just tight enough to sit there and come back you know double back with a wrench or something like that all right so let's let's make it more real world if i had a jar that I could not open I, like if i handed it to you are you talking like like that yeah, I'll probably be able to open it like nothing. <laughs> I wouldn't want to try to embarrass him like that, so I might, you know, make it look a little hard. But I would be <laughs> oh, I'm glad I you told me that. that. The other day I was trying to open up a bottle of a queso dip. No, like the, and I, in my, my God, I had to get the, I had to wet uh, like a, a towel and twist it, and it took everything I had. I should have just brought it to you. Oh, uh, yeah, man, you should have. <laughs> well, you're also 40 years older and not going to the NFL. So there's a little bit of, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference. What was that like to get the uh, invite to the combine? Was that something that you had dreamed about or thought much about? I mean, obviously you think about it when you're in the process, but was that was that a dream come true in some ways? Yes, sir. In a way, because I remember I was just talking about this with my brother. We was working out at the field over this past summer at the team team, you know, shout out to the Panthers. So, you know, we were working out there, you know, we just talking about it. We sit down. He kind of laid everything out for me. You know, I'm sitting there just kind of, you know, just like, you know, just talking about the whole thing as a whole and all that. He just sat there and told me, like, you know, you're going to play good your last year. You're going to get an invite to one of these games. You don't get an invite to the combine, but you got to go out there and get a combine. You're going to get drafted. You know, everything he was saying kind of simply came true. So, you know, like when I was able to get it, because I was kind of on the cusp, because I was like, you know, I didn't know because I didn't receive the email or nothing like that. So when I got the actual confirmation that I had made, it, I was just like, you know, wow, I was just kind of, I kind of relief in the dream come to it's true as well. You know, there's nothing I have to worry about, but you know, I'm ready to go out there, you know, and show the world what I can do. Well, we had somebody on the chat room. We have, we're, we're on YouTube and we've got an audience from coast to coast and somebody on the chat room, Japhis mentioned that you were a star uh, in, in the SWAC and that you were the one who did a great job pass blocking some of the best defensive or pass rushers uh, it, uh, among the HBCUs that you played. Your thoughts about this? Somebody who's watching our show that knew you. Uh, that's amazing. You know, shout out to whoever just gave me that comment. You know, I really appreciate that because, you know, being an offensive lineman in the slack as well, you know, it's kind of like, you know, anybody really second place. He's not a quarterback or a running back. I wanted them to start a physical being like you mentioned. But, you know, notice that somebody out there watching my game and really appreciate it. It's amazing. So, you know, I really just appreciate whoever got, gave me that comment. Thank you so much. You seem to be a really happy young man. Have you always been that way? Uh, yes, sir, for the most part. You know, I've been I've been through life my whole life. Uh, my school, I've been tired, uh, tired of my life. So, you know, I've just been able to just, just kind of keep that bright side, look forward to the bright side in life, you know, because I've been through, you know, more than probably your average 23-year-old, three-year-old event through. So, you know, just to be able to just kind of keep that positive outlook on life, just kind of keep me happy. So, you know, it's the best thing to me wake up every day and do what I'm doing. You know, a lot of people want to be in my shoes. So, you know, I just take, take every day as it is and just appreciate it. So, uh, Jafus Cavill was the, uh, the man that – I love watching him play against some of the better ranked defensive ends and pass rushers. He loved the fact you're on the show with us as well. So how many interviews have you done with either teams? And I know the combine will be a battering ram of that. And how much of being on this show or other shows as you move on will be important to you as you develop and be in front of the media? These, I've had like a, to be honest, I have had a ton of interviews with scouts from since I have got to, since fall, since his last past fall camp, I probably talked to almost all the NFL teams that it came through there. Probably every team came through there, but maybe like one or two, honestly, and I could be wrong. They probably all didn't came through there. So, you know, I was able to sit down and talk to all of them, you know. Coming from a smaller school, I was kind of the only one they were scouting. So, you know, I was able to get, you know, critical, critical, you know, prep, prep in that area, that situation, you know, just be able to, you know, I know how to talk to scouts, you know, getting their insights of what they think about me, you know. Also, ask them, you know, how, how I could have did better in some interviews and answer some questions, you know, I think that as well. Because, you know, when I got back to the Shrine Bowl, it was kind of like I see I was seeing the same stuff that I was seeing throughout the year. So I was able to get, you know, a lot of good practice, you know, interviewing and all that type of stuff. So, you know, that's kind of a big help to help me out in that area. And, you know, just being on these shows, you know, it's a great it's a great way to, you know, develop, you know, media training and all that, you know, knowing what to say, knowing what not to say, you know, knowing how to answer questions and all that. So, you know, being on this show has been – Great help. It's been great, you know, talking to you all so far. So, you know, I've been, you know, well, been, you know, very happy to be on this show. So, you know, it's kind of thank you for helping me out with the media training and all that. But, you know, this show really helped me out more than you even can know. Every time you do another one, you just learn a little bit more. You've done a great job. Love your passion. You can tell your personality. I've heard you're a humble, a very humble but quiet leader. But when you're on the football field, 
that's when you do your talking. But you're also involved in one thing about you as the community and being a part of uh, helping and teaching and spending time with kids in the community. How much has that meant to you? That's been a lot to me because, you know, all the kids are, you know, they're, they're, that's the next generation. So, you know, they're not allowed to be the next future lawyers, doctors, and whatnot. So, you know, being able to, you know, kind of be a cusp and learning up, you know, being able to somebody they can lean on, it's kind of been, it's been a great opportunity, you know. Palm Bluff area is kind of like, you know, it's a low income area, you know, it's not, you know, the best area in the city or like that. So, you know, being able to, you know, be around there, go around to the schools, you know, talk to the kids, read to the kids, stuff like that, it's kind of been great. So, you know, I remember in school, you know, we had donors for dads, stuff like that, you know. I never had anybody coming there for me. So, you know, I just always, you know, said, you know, I wanted to be the one that was coming there for kids, volunteer for kids, stuff like that. So, you know, that's kind of what would lead to me on that about the community and all like that, you know. Just because, you know, I honestly just, you know, love kids. So, you know, that's kind of just something that, you know, I enjoy helping. I enjoy helping people. Thank you very much, Mark. Good luck. Mark Evans the second from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Pine Bluff offensive lineman, based in on what he said. It looks like he could project to a center, 6'4", about 295, big hands, and uh, just love the, uh, the, the just amazing personality and great to have him on again. Thanks to Lauren Birchfield in setting these up for us, and we'll have many more 